Having defined the logistic regression model and the corresponding cross entropy or negative log likelihood loss, the next step would be to minimize that loss. As I already noted, unfortunately, there isn't a closed form solution to minimizing the cross entropy or negative log likelihood loss. As a consequence, we typically adopt iterative methods to minimizing the loss. Now, in practice, you will often use a software package which can automatically fit the logistic regression model by calling the appropriate optimization routines. And in fact, we will show you how to use the scikit-learn logistic regression classes, which will actually use uh, the LBFGS solver, which is a little bit more sophisticated than standard stochastic gradient. Um, but I actually wanted to show you how to implement logistic regression using PyTorch, in part because it will demonstrate that we can start from the model, write down the loss, and then take the gradient of the loss iteratively to construct a solution or the, the parameters that minimize that loss. So now I will walk through that process. So the first step in the process is to define the logistic regression model. Recall when we introduced PyTorch, we had to define for our model a forward function, which describes the process of making a prediction, and then the loss, which uses that forward function to compute a single scalar quantity, which is the measure of the loss on our data. And then we could take the gradient uh, computationally, or use uh, algorithmic techniques to take the gradient of that loss with respect to our model parameters. So the first step is to define the model. Here I've defined the logistic uh, model, which extends the neural net module. We define our model parameters. Uh, this will be our theta. Uh, in, in, in code form, I'm not going to use theta. I'll use w for weight. Uh, so my, my weight attached to my logistic regression model um, is going to consist of two parameters. So here's actually the model. So to make a prediction, uh, the forward process is making is the process of making predictions. Uh, so to make a prediction, I'm going to do one divided by one plus the exponent of my linear model. And here is the linear model here. So I'm going to take w0 uh, plus w1 times x. So this is the same equation that we have right here. Right. So this is the same equation as before. Uh, and I've taken the negative of the sum of these terms. So let's go back down here once more. So it's the negative of the parentheses of the this linear sum here. And as I noted a moment ago, we initialize these parameters either as uh, zeros um, or uh, the uh, numpy vector that's passed in. So we can run this. And then here's an instance of my logistic regression model. I'll initialize the weights with the constant term being zero and the uh, slope term, my w1 here, is going to be 1. And now I can make a, a prediction by passing in a tumor size of 3. And it's going to return a probability that tumor is malignant of 0.9526. Now, if, if we went back and looked at our plots, this is not a very good parameterization of the model, but it at least demonstrates that we can now make predictions using uh, our PyTorch model. Now we have to fit it, so the next step in, in fitting this model to our data is to define our loss function. Here I define the cross entropy loss uh, as a function of my predicted probability and my observed y value, which is either 0 or 1, corresponding to benign or malignant. Now let's go back to our equation. So here is our equation uh, for the loss. And it's going to be the sum of this expression here. Let's actually copy this down so we can look at it beside our code. Bringing our expression for the loss down here so we can check it. So I'm taking the negative, negative sum, so I have the sum here, the sum of my y value times the log of my prediction, so my p hat is going to be the prediction for my model, plus 1 minus y um, times the log of 1 minus uh, my prediction again, p hat. All right, so I've directly implemented this mathematical expression here uh, to compute the cross entropy loss, or the negative log likelihood loss. All right. So we can now uh, use PyTorch to 
uh, implement gradient descent very uh, easily and efficiently. Uh, so the first step is we'll need to transform our data into a tensor data set that we can then sample from to implement uh, stochastic gradient descent. Uh, as before, the tensor data set takes an X tensor and a Y tensor, where the rows of the X tensor correspond to individual examples, and the, the rows or entries of the Y tensor correspond to the thing I'm trying to predict. All right, so now I'm going to implement the gradient descent. Uh, to do that, I will use the uh, torch ADMM update function. I could also use the SGD update function. I'll show you how I do that in a second. Uh, this code is directly taken from an earlier lab on PyTorch. So the, func the uh, ADMM stochastic gradient descent function will take my model, the loss function, a data set, the learning rate I'd like to use, the number of epochs I'd like to run this. Uh, so here I'm going to run it for a fixed number of epochs. A slightly more sophisticated version might stop early instead of running the full number of epochs once the model converge or the weights uh, stop changing between iterations. Uh, and I'll set the batch size to 10. So I'm going to take a sample of 10 uh, tumors at each round and use that to compute my gradient rather than constructing the gradient over the entire data set. So a data loader is going to efficiently load this data uh, and it's going to do my sampling and it'll shuffle each pass through the data so that I get a, a random sample on each draw from my data set. I'm going to initialize the atom optimizer. This is just a slightly more sophisticated way to do the gradient step. So rather than simply subtracting off the gradient on each round, it will uh, maintain information like momentum as well as adjusting learning rates depending on how different parts of the model are converging. So I'm going to run for uh, the number of epochs that I've specified here, 100 epochs. I'm going to sample uh, 10 in this case if it, the default batch size is 10, so I'll sample 10 uh, tumors from my data set, uh, their corresponding features and the labels. So I'll then compute the loss by using my loss function uh, and my model. So my model will make a prediction at a given value x for the current parameterization of that model. I will take the loss with respect to the true observation y that I observed in my data. And this will be a scalar, a single number. Uh, I can then ask PyTorch to construct the derivative of all of, uh, of the loss with respect to all of my parameters, which is the gradient. And then once I've done that, the optimizer, which is attached to my model parameters up here, um, the optimizer will then update the model parameters based on the loss that I had just computed. It can do that by looking at each of the model parameters, which will now have a gradient term attached to them. And they'll have a gradient term attached because when I called loss.backwards, uh, it updated the, the gradient attached to each of my parameters. All right, and then once I'm done all this, I zero out my gradient uh, so that on the next round when I step, I can compute a gradient again. So that is it. Uh, that is stochastic gradient with an atom update. Uh, it is worth noting I could change my function to be SGD. In fact, we can try that in a second. So we'll go ahead and execute this. So now I'm going to actually run my optimizer so that this code up here to find the optimization routine. Uh, this code here is going to create an instance of my model with an initial parameterization with the zero as the, uh, the constant term and one as the slope. I will pass the model in. I will select the cross entropy loss I defined above and the tensor data that I also defined above. Okay, so we can run this. Uh, it's worth noting that this block of code here is an iterative procedure, it'll be, be a bit slow. And when it's done, I can look at the parameters of my model. Right, so it's done, and these were the parameters that I estimated for the, the intercept and the slope. And so it's a, a positive slope term, so that would suggest that as the tumors got larger, the probability that it is malignant uh, is increasing. So we can now plot the predictions. So to do that, I'm going to use my model that is now fit with these new parameters up here, uh, and I will take the, the call the forward function, passing in my x values that of, for each of the points in my plot that I'd like to plot. And I'll save those results as not tensors, but as NumPy, as a NumPy array so that I can then plot it. Note that I'm doing this within the Torch Nograd environment. I'm doing that so that I don't track the gradients when making these predictions, because I don't intend to do a gradient update uh, using these, these predictions. 
Let's make my predictions. And here is our first fit logistic regression model. So now this is the probability, this curve here corresponds to the predicted probability of the, the tumor being malignant given the mean radius of that tumor. Now, a moment ago, I said I might try a different optimizer, so let's go back and do that. We can change our Atom SGD optimizer to use the vanilla SGD update instead of Atom, so let's try doing that. So we can change to SGD, make this SGD down here, and this should just work. So now we're not using Atom, but SGD. Ah, so it, it diverged. Uh, so notice that these, these uh, estimated parameters were not a number. This is because the loss got uh, too large. One of the challenges in using a stochastic gradient, uh, especially with the loss function like the log loss, is if you don't implement the loss calculation correctly, um, you're taking exponents of numbers that can get very big very quickly, uh, and you can overflow the, the floating point precision. A simple fix would be to set the learning rate smaller. Let's try doing that. So it had a smaller learning rate, but now you notice that it didn't converge to the same value. Uh, so we might actually need to make learning rate a little bigger. It's not bad. Uh, and one other thing we could do is set the batch size to be just slightly larger. Uh, so we maybe use 50, this will be a little more stable. Yep. And we can go to slightly smaller learning rate. Uh, maybe not. Uh, we'll go back to, to 10. All right, so uh, we were able to fit the model. Let's take a look at what this one looks like. About the same, right? So you notice that the uh, SGD optimizer is a little bit more fragile. That is why in practice I would use something like Atom. Uh, and the reason to do that is it's going to be a little more sophisticated in adjusting these learning rates on the fly so that we don't diverge. So we'll go back and run Atom once more. There's our fit again. All right, so you saw the basic process of using PyTorch to define the model, to define the loss, and then implementing gradient descent ourselves using PyTorch to minimize that loss. Now, in practice, again, I do not recommend using PyTorch to solve logistic regression problems. You can use more efficient optimizers that also have better implementations of the loss. And in fact, actually, I wouldn't recommend using the cross-entropy loss the way I implemented it here, I would use the native cross-entropy loss function in PyTorch because it's going to have better numerical stability and be slightly more efficient as well. All right, so that is PyTorch. Now we'll move on to using scikit-learn to fit logistic regression models.